Hello again, my name's John. I'm a retired cook from the northeast of England in the UK and welcome to my latest video recipe. And in this video recipe, I'll show you how to make this Moorish cauliflower cheese, which is topped off with a delicious parmesan and breadcrumb crust. Now I use the adjective Moorish in the title, which simply means wanting more. It sums up this recipe exactly, and it's easy to make. You can view the ingredients list and full written method for this recipe on the recipe page on the channel's website. I'll leave a link in the description under the video or you can click on the eye icon top right of the screen to take you directly to the recipe page. I'd also like to thank my Patreon, PayPal and Super Thank supporters for their very kind help in producing these tutorial videos. Your amazing financial support really helps with ever increasing equipment, ingredient and editing software costs. I'll be giving you all a name splash and shout out a little later in the video. Ok, let's get on with today's recipe. Start by cutting off all the leaves of the collie where they meet the main stem of the vegetable. Once all the leaves are off, cut off the thick stem too. Now using a paring knife, cut off the individual florets at the stem. Once all your florets are off, get them into a suitable pan. Now add water to the pan until they just cover all of the collie. Add a half a teaspoon of salt to the water. Now bring the pot to a low boil. Cover the pan and let it cook for 10 minutes. And while the collie's cooking on the back burner, I'll make the cheese sauce. First part is melt your butter in a saucepan on a medium heat. Once the butter's melted, add your flour to the pan. And stir fry using a spatula for about one minute. Right, time to add the milk. Now swap to a whisk. I'll be adding all of the milk in three separate stages. Add a little of the milk at first and mix it in. And once that's mixed in, add the second part of the milk. And whisk that in. Once there's no more visible lumps, add the rest of the milk. Now continue slowly whisking until the sauce comes to a simmer. It'll thicken as it heats up. Don't add any seasoning just yet. Wait and see what it tastes like after the cheese has gone in. Once your sauce is simmering, add the cheese. I'm using half mature or strong cheddar and half red Leicester. The red cheese gives the sauce a wonderful orangey colour, but if you can't get red Leicester, just use all cheddar. Switching back to a spatula, stir in the grated cheese until it has all melted. You'll find once your cheese goes in, it starts to get even thicker. You can taste for seasoning at this point. Right, I think mine needs a little salt, so I'll add half a teaspoon. And yep, that's perfect. Now clean down the size of your pan, cover it and set it aside for now. Once your collie has been cooking for 10 minutes, completely strain off all the water. And that's it, we're now ready to put this cauliflower cheese together. And I'll be making mine in this delightful pie dish. The sizes of the dish are on screen. For the crust of this cauliflower cheese, you'll need 100 grams of breadcrumbs. I made mine myself by blitzing two slices of fresh white bread in my mini processor. Also, I'll be finely grating a little parmesan over the top of mine too. 
If you don't have any parmesan, don't worry about it. You can simply use ordinary cheddar. Before going any further, preheat your oven to 180 degrees Celsius, that's 355 Fahrenheit, or gas mark 4. OK, let's put this delicious dish together. Carefully and gently tip your cooked florets into the dish. Spread them out evenly spaced, but make sure all your florets are facing upwards. Now get your cheese sauce and start to ladle it over the cauliflower. By the way, this cheese sauce can be used in lots of other dishes like lasagna, mac and cheese, my ham and leek bake recipe. Add a bit less cheese and lots of parsley and that will give you a fantastic sauce for a fish pie. Once your sauce is in, give it a few gentle taps on the bench to fill in any of the gaps. Now sprinkle on your breadcrumbs. And like I said earlier, this is literally two slices of fresh soft white bread, including the crusts, blitzed in my mini processor for one minute. Dead easy. It actually took me longer to clean the machine afterwards. Time to finely grate on some of that parmesan. Like I said earlier, if you don't have any, you can use cheddar, but the parmesan gives this dish another dimension. And when you're finely grating parmesan, a little goes a long way, so you're not using that much. It doesn't work out as expensive as you might think. Now, to add a bit more colour to mine, I'm going to sprinkle on a little more of my red Leicester and cheddar. Once again, use this sparingly. And that's it. It's ready to bake. Now get it into your preheated oven. Once in, set your timer for 25 minutes. And while that's baking, I hope you don't mind if I give my four recipe books a quick shout out. The books have lots of our favourite recipes from our work kitchens in them. And also, book four in this series is totally dedicated to bread recipes. And by popular demand, the skeleton style oven gloves are now available too. Just click on the eye icon top right of your screen and that will take you to the website shop where all of these items are available now. And that's it, this wonderful cauliflower cheese is done. OK, I'll get it out and onto a wire rack. And the aroma in our new kitchen is amazing. And doesn't that look fantastic? I'll let it settle for a couple of minutes and when I come back, I'll have a taste. Right, time to serve up a portion of this delicious cauliflower cheese. Now this cauliflower cheese is so versatile, you can serve it with lots of main dishes. From various cuts of meat to salads or even just on its own, it's absolutely delicious. We often have it with a roast beef Sunday lunch. Another great thing about this recipe is you can try it out with different ingredients. Try adding finely sliced onions or garlic and chilies before the cheese sauce goes on. I sometimes add a dollop of whole grain mustard to the cheese sauce in the pan. Experiment, it's what cooking's all about. Just listen to how crispy that parmesan and breadcrumb crust is. Another great thing about this recipe is you can try it out with different ingredients. Try adding finely sliced onions or garlic and chilies before the cheese sauce goes on. I sometimes add a dollop of whole grain mustard to the cheese sauce in the pan. Experiment, it's what cooking's all about. It's simply a great dish that everyone should know how to make. Simple, nutritious and fun to make. Without a shred of a doubt, a big thumbs up for this one guys. And as promised at the beginning of the video, here is the latest list of my Patreon, PayPal and Super Thank You button supporters. And they are Nigel Hollingworth, Isori Mercia, Anna Butty, Clint Hall, VHS Rallies, Russ Williams, George Duggar, Melesek3356, Bruno Borg03, Jens K3250, Jane Federici9140, Maud2310, Wookiees and James Dowling, and there's also one who wishes to remain anonymous. Thanks very much guys, I really do appreciate all that you do in supporting the channel. 
Well, thank you again for watching. Please like, share, comment and subscribe by hitting the circle above. If you do subscribe, activate the bell icon next to the subscribe button on my channel page. And by doing that, you'll be automatically notified every time I upload a new video. And in the meantime, here's a few of my other videos and playlists that you may want to watch. So, until the next time, be safe in your kitchen and bye for now.